Hey you guys, so for today's video, I thought it would be kind of fun to use some brands that I don't see being talked about as often on the YouTubes. I'm gonna preface this with saying, <laughs> I don't watch YouTube very often. <laughs> So maybe these are actually the most popular brands on YouTube and I'm just unaware. So a few brands on the radar today, Anastasia, Beverly Hills, Glossier. Funny joke, Sam. Um, I ordered from two different websites. I ordered uh, from Sephora what I could because I get that via B Rouge shipping. And then I ordered some stuff from Beautylish as well. Two sad things. <laughs> I was originally shopping on my phone and the order wasn't going through. So I was like, fuck, I'll just like go onto my computer. And I, I accidentally ordered doubles. <laughs> of two things and I was like, well, that's depressing. And then the other thing that happened is um, one of my bronzers that I ordered came pre-swatched. I don't know if you'll be able to see. There's little finger marks in there. That was not a service that I opted in for, but they applied anyways to my order. Oh, wow, yeah, and that was the other thing. When I ordered from Sephora, I realized I ordered extra from there too, fuck. I ordered an extra palette, an extra one of those eye pigment things from Ink Redible, an extra Danessa Myricks pigment, and an extra Dew Wet Balm. We're gonna have a competition. You have to fight to the death. The competition rules are this. You have to comment on my YouTube saying, I'd really appreciate those things. And then I'll choose one of you and we will, I'll send it to your house. Okay. Oh, wow. I forgot the whole thing that sparked this like whole video. Okay. So, wow. This is the longest intro of all time. I'm so fucking sorry. I was looking at my friend's Instagram stories and she was talking about, she like has her little like paws in like a million different businesses. And, um, she's always like friends with all these like entrepreneurs and shit. Anyways, she was talking about this sponge on her Instagram story. And I was like, shit, that sponge looks really interesting. And I went to the Instagram page and I was like, I'm gonna buy that. And they were like, no dude, it's pre-order only. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll pre-order order it. So anyways, it's this sponge, it's called super sponge and it's kind of, it's like a beauty blender on the bottom, but it's dipped in silicone or like silicone infused on the top. So it's still really like soft, but it's just weird. It's weird. I'm so like interested to try it. Full disclosure. I ordered all this other shit. I pre-ordered this, but then when the chick saw the lady, the woman from Super Sponge saw um, my pre-order, she just sent this to me. I don't think she charged my visa. I don't know. So this may or may not be for free. I'm pretty sure it was free. Thanks, Super Sponge. <laughs> they say to put everything on with this side and then like only use this side for like, if you need to kind of thing. Um, and it also came with a little scrubby thing. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna start with my concealer. So I'm using the uh, Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer in the shade 2N. Ooh, that is... Ooh, that has a unique scent. <laughs> I can't quite put my finger on that. It's kind of like, it smells like, I don't know, like melted plastic with a hint of my nightmares. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on. I'm gonna take this super sponge. Oh, this is so odd. I'm just trying to suss out the feeling of this for a second. Oh, this is so odd. This is so odd. Okay, okay. You wet this, by the way, the same way that you would like a beauty blender, but it's so strange. Oh, that concealer color is actually fine. Maybe like a little dark, but. So apparently the whole point of the silicone is so that like it doesn't like suck up your product and like the, the um, sponge like isn't supposed to break down as quickly. I'm interested to like try this with like my regular products to see how it changes the coverage and stuff like that. My initial impressions using this under my eye, the sponge, not the concealer, like I feel like the coverage is fine and like it's blending it out really nicely and stuff. It almost feels like it's like too stiff like, it's like a natural feeling. Like it's too stiff and like bulky underneath my eye. So like when Beauty Blender came out with those smaller blenders, I was like, well, that's dumb as shit. Cause I'm like, I would just never buy like a smaller Beauty Blender for like one area of my face, you know? But I feel like with this brand, like I almost think that having a smaller blender for eye shit would be better because like this just feels so like bulky and like too, I don't know, like like structured underneath my eye. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know how to describe it better, but okay. I'm going to take um, a little bit of this and try and spot conceal with it as well. I'm not sure it's like the best color for it, but we're just going to go for it. 
See, like this doesn't bother me at all on the rest of my face. Like it feels like fine, but it's just like underneath the eyes. It almost feels like too invasive or something. I'm also curious how this sponge will affect like the dewiness of um, certain products because I feel like my beauty blender definitely does add like a lot of moistness to the mix, you know? Hmm, hmm, okay, this is so interesting, wow. I do feel like normally with my spot concealing, I would blend out my concealer with my fingers because I find that the Beauty Blender kind of like removes the product off those areas um, and I need more coverage over those areas. Whereas like underneath my eyes, it's not a huge deal if it like picks up a little bit. So I do feel like this really aided in the coverage of like spot concealing and stuff like that, but it looks super smooth. Like it doesn't look like, there's no like obvious line or anything from what I can see, which I was kind of worried about because it's like stiffer from the silicone. I'm intrigued. Okay, and then the concealer, I feel like it's not mind blowing to me. I actually don't mind it over my spots because it doesn't look particularly dry or like textured, but underneath the eyes, it almost makes my eyes look a little bit like drier than I prefer. So I don't know about that. I actually feel like maybe I prefer it for spot concealing. We'll just have to see. Okay, let me do this uh, foundation. So I'm gonna mix the two shades. I got sage, sage, I got shade six and shade two. I'm gonna mix them like maybe, oh Jesus, oh wow, that's very liquidy. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. It does say it's a face oil. I was gonna mix those like 25 dark, 75 light, but I just put out like a lot of that dark color. Oh wow, that's so hard to put out like a small amount of that. Okay, oh wow, it's so odd. It's so odd, like it just is like right on the sponge. Okay, oh God. Oh wow, that's like so much more coverage than I was expecting. Okay, 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 okay. How am I gonna do this? It's a nice sound. Hmm. This foundation smells like paint. Not like paint from the can, but like you know when you go into a place that's been recently painted and you're like, did y'all paint? And they're like, yeah, we did, we did on the weekend. That's what it smells like. A recently painted home of a couple. Can you imagine that? Brian reached out to me and they were like, that's exactly what we were going for. <laughs> I was really expecting to love this foundation. I'm gonna start with that. Oh, it feels weird. Oh God. Oh God, this is horrifying. Look at right here. I'm just like hoping and praying you can see this. Do you see it attaching to every piece of hair I've ever grown out of my face? Oh God. This is making me look so textured. This is not what I was expecting. Okay, hold on. Oh, this is the thing that's so hard about trying like multiple products at once because like, is it the sponge? Is it the the face oil, I don't know. There's a couple areas where like I want a little bit more coverage. I feel like with this sponge, like I think it's actually blending this out quite nicely, but I feel like because it picks up so much product and it's not absorbing any of it, I feel like I kind of have to like dot off the foundation, like pick some up, dot it off in the back of my hand before I go into my face because otherwise like it's just applying way too much for me. Okay, I'm gonna take that little side of the thing. I'm like panicking about using this side because they were like, don't use that side unless you need to. And I was like, okay. Oh, it's so soft. Mm, it feels like softer kind of than like my blender. Very nice. Oh, it's like a little powder puff. It's so gentle. I definitely don't think that foundation is like particularly flattering. It's not really like doing what I'm looking for, you know? Like I feel like it looks really glowy, but it's doing nothing else for my skin beyond that. The coverage is actually more than I was expecting considering it's called like a face oil. Um, I'm just really curious to try that. I think what I'm gonna do is film this and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna try and apply that foundation just with my hands. Maybe I'll do like my hands on one side and then with like my normal sponge on the other just to kind of see because I feel like maybe this is one of those foundations that is like aided from being applied with your hands. I don't know. I'm not digging it right now, I'll say that. Sorry, I just have a few more things I wanna say about this foundation. I feel like the problem that I have while I'm applying it is that it feels like I have very little control over like where it's going and like how much I'm applying basically. Like I feel like there's areas where like it just looks so like broken up kind of thing, but like I can't add more coverage there even if I'm like trying to with like my finger or like a brush or whatever. I can't get it to like layer almost, but <laughs> I'll give it one positive. I feel like it looks very thin on my skin. Like I like that it looks like, not like this thick kind of layer of foundation. I'll zoom you guys in. Okay, so we're gonna bust into these uh, 
this Aether Beauty palette. I'm going to grab this color just to put it in my crease kind of thing. I feel like this color is actually showing up better than I expected it to because that color looked very, very light in the pan, but like going on, it looks pretty, pretty okay. Where's my little mirror? Hmm. It also looks so pink on my eyeball. I'm going to take that gray tone and I'm going to bring it into my crease. Oh wow, see that color's so much lighter too. Like I was expecting that to be way darker on my lid. Huh, this is all translating so like oddly. Just as an initial thought, I can't see this palette being super applicable for people with um, deeper skin tones just because all the shades in it are quite light. Like even like the darkest shade is not really that dark. So I feel like it would be really tricky to um, get that color to show up like properly and not ashy on deeper skin tones. I'm gonna take a little bit of that darker color. It's kind of like a almost green gray sh shade. It's I'm having a really rough day today. I'm gonna grab it on a little bit of a denser brush just to see if I can make it um, a little more intense. See, it's just so interesting because like that color showing up exactly how I would expect it to, but the other two kind of didn't. I'm gonna try and blend it out with this shade up here because this shade kind of ended up turning really purpley on my eye anyways. I'm gonna grab that shade right there and I'm gonna put it all over the lid. Oh, that's depressing, okay. I'm just kind of pressing that on with my finger because it was not um, giving me the payoff I was looking for the brush. And then when I put it on with my finger, I just kind of take my brush to blend it into those tighter areas that I can't get to with these little nails. I'm gonna see if that um, builds up any better with a wet brush. Oh yeah, a little bit. I'm gonna grab the other side of my brush and I'm gonna wet it as well. And then I'm gonna pick up this color right at the bottom. It kind of looks like um, Club from MAC. I'm just kind of packing that between that uh, lighter purple color and the outside shade. But it's not really happening, so maybe not. I'm going to think about this. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that darkest shade and I'm going to just kind of pat that closer in towards the lid because that one shade wasn't really doing what I was hoping for it to do. And then I'm gonna take my Danessa Myricks Daydreaming Pigment and it kind of has like a little hole so I'm just gonna tap some out on my palette. I'm just gonna press that into my brush and I'm gonna see how it applies first dry and then we'll go from there if we need to. Oh wow, oh this is so pretty. Okay, okay. Oh my God. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm literally just like tapping this on like so feather light. I wish you guys could see this like in person because I feel like there's so much dimension to it IRL. It's definitely like adding a little bit of dimension to this look because it was looking a little flat for my liking. I'm gonna take another little brush like that and I'm going to grab. I'm gonna grab that lightest shade there and I'm gonna put it on my inner corner just a little. Oh, that's a really pretty shade. Mmm, that shade is so nice. Hold on, maybe I'll put a little of this under my brow bone. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that uh, shade right there and I'm gonna put it underneath my eyeballs. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the tiniest little bit of that darkest color that we used uh, on a little shader brush and I'm just going to darken up underneath my eyeballs. And then I'll put on my mascara and I'll kind of leave it like that for the rest of the video so you guys can see it and then I'll pop on lashes at the very end. So I'm gonna try and put this on as a contour first and then use the other bronzer that I got over top, I think. I'm gonna grab this on my Cosette brush and I'm just gonna kind of dot in there. I'm scared. Hmm. That is a weird tone. I feel like if you're kind of trying to touch the top parts, it's like too cool tone for me. And then if I'm grabbing it from the bottom, it's like just odd. Those are my thoughts. I'm gonna grab this Saint Tropez bronzer. I'm gonna take it on a big old brush cause this is a big old bronzer. And I'm just going to... Ugh, I'm using someone else's touched product. 
I do actually, f oh shit, maybe I really like this bronzer, uh-oh. I do feel like it's sheer enough that like you can build it up really, really slowly, whereas like a lot of bronzers, and I don't know why it's so annoying, but like a lot of bronzers are very, very pigmented, and it's kind of like as soon as you put it on, it's so much pigmentation, you're trying to blend it out. I kind of prefer that like I'm having to spend some time building this up. Maybe that bronzer is really nice, I don't know. And actually the tone I feel like is fine too, because I was a little concerned when I saw it in person. I was like, ooh, that looks like very red toned, but I was like, maybe Saint Tropez knows what they're doing. Okay, I'm so excited to bust into this blush. Oh, it's so heavy, it's so majestic. I'm gonna, oh, I feel so stressed that they don't want me to use this side. The sponge came with like this little like print up, probably should have kept that. And it was just like, use this side for everything, only use this for like touch ups and like buffing out. I was like, but what if I need to use it for everything? Ugh. I think it's like more so just because like it breaks down the sponge quicker. Like if you're using it like you would your beauty blender because it gets in there, you know, I don't know. Anyways, I'll try and use the side they want me to use first. I'm gonna, I don't know how pigmented this blush is gonna be. Okay. Oh, everything's fine. Oh, everything's fine. Oh boy, oh boy. Ooh, ooh, I feel like that's so beautiful. Hold on, I'm gonna swatch this on my hand. Wow, yes. Oh, it's so sheer and magical. Like, I feel like it offers like, wow. I feel like it's giving my skin like a really nice like glow and like freshness to it. It's very sheer, it's like very buildable because I'm, I used to love blush, like I would just pile it on like crazy. And now I just kind of am like almost scared of it. I'm like, oh, I just don't want it to be too much on my face. But I feel like this is like so perfect. It's just like so easy to build up without going overboard, I feel like, which is so common with blush. Like it's like you could just barely like touch it and like put it on and you're like, oh God, it's like this like pink. Wow, how nice. Okay, this is the shade by the way, Desired Glow. That's exactly what this is. That's exactly what I need from this brand. This is my desired glow. They know everything about me. I'm gonna try this highlight on this side and I might top it with some of that Danessa Myricks thing, but I'll just put the Danessa Myricks one on this one so you guys can see. Okay, I'm taking my little sponge. Ooh, oh yeah. I think this highlight is like more what I was like hoping for from this brand, cause this is majestic. Now I'm gonna wipe this off. Am I supposed to do this? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try the Danessa Myricks one on this side and we'll see how it goes. This one does have kind of like what looks like a goldish shimmer to it. It's like so slight, I feel like. Hold on, where's my mirror? Ooh, oh God, oh God. Now I don't know what to feel. Sorry, I'm trying to look at it from both sides. I do feel like the Danessa Myricks one is kind of picking up the bronzer underneath just a little bit. Um, and I also feel like I can kind of see uh, like actual like particles of glitter. And it's not like very pronounced. It's just kind of like when I'm looking at it close up, I can kind of be like, oh yeah, I see like some little gold flecks in there. I feel like this one is definitely more like balmy looking, whereas this looks almost like sweat. <laughs> this side for me is like that like perfect yoga skin, you know what I'm saying? We've all seen that photo floating around Instagram. I think they have like a very similar appearance and on camera, probably even more similar. But in person, I feel like there's just tiny little differences texture wise. And I do feel like this Koza one didn't like pick up um, product underneath at all. So I think that like I would sooner kind of use this one day to day. Okay, let's bust into these um, lip colors a little bit. I'm gonna swatch them all first. So this is the Beach Balm from Wander Beauty. I kind of picked this one up because it's sort of a color I don't opt for as much. Like it's a lot more of like a berry pink. So I thought that might be kind of like fun to try. Uh, am I gonna go for a nude? Probably. I also got these um, by Terry Hyaluronic Sheer Rouge. This is the color Dare to Bear. Oh, it's in there wonky. Okay, probably can't see that. Ooh, that shade looks really friggin' nice. They look so similar on my hand. <laughs> ugh, ugh, it smells like baby powder. And then I also got this fun color. This is called Zest Shot. Probably not gonna go with that one with this eye look, a little weird. Ooh, it looks so beautiful though, like for summer. Okay, let me try the Wander Beauty one on first and we'll see how we like it. Wow. It's not as sheer as I was expecting. Okay, I feel like I talk about this all the time when I'm talking about 
sheer lipsticks, but I haven't shown you guys one that actually does it. The struggle you'll sometimes find with sheer formulas is that it'll be nice and sheer on the outside and like an even color, and then it'll be darker and kind of cling to your dry patches. Let me zoom you in. So this one isn't as pronounced as like other formulas I've tried, but you can kind of see how it's like much darker in those areas where like I have a little bit of dryness on my lips. I don't know, Wander Beauty, that's gonna have to be a maybe for me. Okay, I'm gonna try this By Terry one. Oh, I just hate the smell of this. A lot of the By Terry stuff smells like this and it just turns me off of the brand so much. Like, I do not like that like powdery scent. Ooh. Oh, what this feels really nice on my lips. Mmm. Ooh, I can taste it while I'm like breathing in. Um, but that formula looks really beautiful on my lips. Like I feel like it looks really nice. I'll zoom you in. I feel like it looks really nice and like smooth and you can kind of see like even though there's some dryness there, it's not as pronounced and I feel like it still looks like a really nice wash of color all the way through. Let me throw on some lashes and then I'm gonna talk about my final feelings towards all of these products. I have to change this lip. I feel like Barbie with this pink like bubble gum lipstick and then the purple eyeshadow. Ugh. Sweet serenity of a nude lipstick. So the first thing we used was the uh, Laura Mercier concealer. I feel like I could kind of take or leave this. I did like it for spot concealing, so I feel like that's what I'll probably try to use it for mostly. It didn't look too like dry or cakey or anything like that over top of my spots. And I felt like, you know, they're like, concealed. It's not like the most full coverage I've ever used in my life, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, not anything I would say like you need to run out and buy it. Then we used the Koza foundation. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like it doesn't look horrifically bad, but I don't love it. And this foundation is $55, which is pretty expensive. So I feel like for me, like it would really need to be like a home run, especially because foundation is something that you go through every day. You're gonna use up a lot more quickly than something like an eyeshadow palette. So I don't know, like I, I don't mind how it looks in certain areas of my face, but um, I just felt like I had no control over the amount of coverage um, or like building up the coverage at all. I think that this foundation is kind of like a gloss a complex situation where if you were naturally like beautiful and had the most incredible skin of all time and it was like you were already a model fine <laughs> like that foundation might look really beautiful on your skin but if you have, like any texture pores acne whatever kind of thing I just think that it's not going to be as much of a home run for those people I also used my little uh, super sponge for everything as I said I feel like it's a little too like bulky and kind of stiff feeling for underneath my eyes I wish that they had a smaller one for that the other side is like super super soft like I feel like hold on let me touch a beauty blender and then touch this yeah, I feel like this is softer for some reason. I definitely feel like I have to use this side, so I'm not gonna be too upset if I am like breaking down this sponge quicker because for me, like I am just so used to that kind of usage of the beauty blender. Like I kind of blend out with this side and then I buff over with this side. I'm really interested to see how this cleans because you're supposed to like scrub it off and apparently it's like perfect once you clean it, but I'm, I'm interested to keep kind of trying it out. I think it did make the coverage like far more intense and it has very light coverage. Like when I kind of blend it onto my hand, there's just like not that much coverage there. So it did add to it a lot in that way. And I also felt like I used like none of my product. And even when I felt like I was picking up a little bit, it was like I was picking up too much. So I do think that it's something that could like kind of save you money in the long run because beauty blenders really do soak up so much product. So I think that like in terms of how I would use this sponge in the future, I probably would never apply with this side. Um, I would always kind of apply with this just because like it didn't use very much product at all, but I would have to kind of like buff it out with the soft side um, like every time I did my makeup. I think it's a really interesting and unique product. Like I feel like there's been so many kind of like beauty blender knockoffs that had nothing different about them. They just kind of wore a slightly different texture or slightly bigger or whatever. And sometimes different shapes and stuff like that. But for me, the beauty blender shape has always been my favorite. Like I feel like I would never really veer from that. Like the real technique sponge and stuff isn't what I need for my makeup because I'm not baking with powder and doing that kind of stuff. Like that shape is like perfect. So not my favorite for underneath the eyes. I felt like it was really good for spot concealing because it kept that coverage um, in that space and it didn't make it kind of like buffed out. And I like that I didn't have to use my fingers for it because I always prefer to use tools over fingers personally. And other than that, I felt like it applied my cream highlight really nicely. The cream blush went on really nicely. So I like it. I'm super interested to like 
clean it, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say. It looks like it's going to be $29.95, but it's $19.95 for pre-order, it looks like. Ooh, and the concealer was, Jesus, $36? Laura, Ms. Mercier, how dare you? What did we use after that? Oh, this eyeshadow palette directly in front of my face. Okay, great. I'm a little torn on this guy. It's $77, which is very expensive for an eyeshadow palette, especially being that the packaging is quite cheap. Like it is just cardboard. There's no magnet in there. There's no weight. There's no mirror. So really like the only cost for packaging is this little kind of like thing and um, the, the cardboard. So when packaging is not a factor in price for me, it's not a huge deal, but I do expect that cost to be made up in the product and formula itself. And for me with this product, that cost wasn't made up through the formula. Like the mattes went on okay, they blended out really nicely. And I felt like the color selection was really nice because it's still a very, very wearable like day to day palette, but it's not like the most typical neutral palette ever that like every brand has released time and time again. So I do think it's nice because it has those kind of soft tones in there that are really easy, really wearable, really quick to kind of just like pop on when you're like running out of the house before work. But I do really wish that the kind of shimmers in the center there offered a little bit more kind of like pigmentation and um, dimension to them because I do think that when you're dealing with colors like this that are a little bit more muted and kind of pastel, which is beautiful, I think it's really nice to have colors incorporated into the palette that do offer a little bit more, um, just kind of that dimension so that you can add that into your eye look. And those for me are so sheer that I feel like they just don't offer that kind of um, texture and appearance that I'm looking for to add like a little bit more drama to the look. So I don't know, like I'm just kind of torn. I think that what the brand is doing is really cool. I think it's neat that they're wanting to do the sustainable packaging and stuff like that, but I just feel like $77 is very steep considering that like there is nothing going into the packaging because it's sustainable and it's recyclable and all that. So I think this one is a miss for me, unfortunately, um, but I'm really interested to kind of keep following the brand and see what they do next. I like the name, I like the idea behind the brand, um, but I don't know. Being that I have the makeup collection that I do, I wouldn't reach for this very often. But if the tones in the palette really call to you and you do like lighter makeup, maybe that might be more of a hit for you. But for me, it just kind of falls a little flat for $77. Thin, ooh, right. The Danessa Myricks Daydreaming Pigment. Beautiful, probably one of my favorite products. Um, of the day. I do think this just added so much to the look and it was really easy to apply. It didn't have a ton of fallout or anything like that. And I didn't feel like I had to spend time like layering it up or anything. It was kind of just like one swipe or like pat of that over top of the shadow and that was all I needed. I do think the packaging's a little bit finicky just because it has that kind of little hole for like pouring it out. And I feel like unless you had a small enough brush to like get in there or maybe use a Q-tip or something, if you were wanting to put it out on like a palette or the back of your hand or whatever, I think it'd be really hard to dispense that product without um, letting out way too much product. Oh yeah, then we did the, uh, I don't know about this. So this was the Kevin O'Quan uh, Celestial Bronze, bron bron you know, <laughs> I'm gonna quit. <laughs> the Celestial Bronzing Veil in Tropical Nights. <sighs> okay. Um, I don't know. This guy is $48 US. Um, I I can't see myself reaching for it. I just feel like the color for me is a little bit off. If I'm dipping into that lighter part, it's just a little too cool tone for me. I'm not, I'm not big on cool tone contours, I'll be honest. I usually do opt for something with a little bit more warmth to it. I'm just that summery glowy bitch, okay? And I felt like when I went down here, um, the bronzer just became too dark for my skin tone. Formula wise, I think it blended out okay. It did seem a little, little bit patchy for me. Um, it could also be because I'm applying it over top of this foundation that is like oil-based. So because that foundation doesn't quite dry down, um, it could just be that kind of moisture in the foundation that's reactivating the pigments in this bronzer. So I don't know. I feel like that's one for me that like I would probably put in my drawer and forget about forever. I'm so sorry, Kevin. Then we tried out the Saint Tropez pre-swatched bronzing three-in-one bronzing powder. This guy's, oh wow, that's cheaper than I was expecting it to be. This is $28. And actually that's a fucking like huge amount of product. Product. Hold on, hold on. This is 22 grams and this is 9.6 grams. Wow, and it's $20 cheaper. Holy guac is extra. Um, I actually, 
I quite like this. I felt like it was very um, sheer and like easy to build up. And a lot of the times for me, I feel like bronzers are so red or so orange. And I felt like this actually was a very nice balanced kind of like more neutral color, definitely more warm toned. Like it's not a cool tone product by any means. I feel like I'll probably get a lot of use out of that one. Then I put on my very expensive and heavy blush from Kahir Weiss, Weiss, Weiss. So this blush is $56. And this is something where I can say like, I know that a considerable amount of that went to the packaging because it's just so heavy. I think that this is made out of Zamek and it's beautiful. It's reminiscent of that Lila B compact that swips, swips, goes like that too. It looks like a little pebble. And the formula of this was honestly phenomenal. It's so beautiful. It offered like such a nice like sheen and glow to my skin. The color was super buildable. It wasn't too intense right out the gate, which is my problem with a lot of blushes. So I feel like it's very approachable if you're kind of new to cream blushes and you're like really scared. It's honestly beautiful. Like I just, I can't say enough good things about it um, other than it's super expensive. <laughs> I feel like this is actually notably better and different than a lot of cream blushes that I've tried. Like I feel like in comparison to like, let's say a MAC cream blush, those feel a lot drier and almost like thicker on my skin. Whereas this just felt like so thin, so glowy and beautiful and easy to layer. Like it's just, it's it's stunning. Loving it, loving life. I'm probably gonna try and buy more from them, um, but like, when I take out a second mortgage on my house, you know? We tried out this highlight from Koza. Mm, that blush actually looks like it's gonna be beautiful too. I'm excited to try it. Um, I felt like that highlight was absolutely beautiful. It was like what I was kind of hoping for from this brand because it seems like they have a lot of like glowy, oily situations. It just applied really beautifully. It didn't pick up that powder bronzer underneath at all. It has a beautiful translucency to it. It's not something that's gonna look like ashy on deeper skin tones or like too dark on lighter skin tones. Like I feel like it's a very, universal shade. What shade is this by the way? Tropic Equinox. Wow. Can't speak to the blush out of there yet, but I'm definitely going to be trying that one out. That one was $45 Canadian. Ooh, then we tried out that Wander Bomb. That guy is $26.40 Canadian. Me thinks not. Oh, and then these exorbitantly priced lip balms. These are $38 US, which is $45. Five Canadian. I don't know why Buy Terry is so expensive, basically. I feel like the formula was really beautiful. It applied very like smoothly and evenly and stuff like that. My impression of Buy Terry, cause I used to get their PR and you'll notice that like I almost never featured them. I don't know if I even featured them once on my channel, but it's because every single time I like opened up their product, I was just kind of like, meh. Like I wasn't super intrigued. Um, I really don't like the like baby powder kind of smell. Um, and they do have that in a lot of their products. And even now, like I've taken that product off with a baby wipe and I've put on different lipstick and I still feel like I can kind of taste that powdery smell, which I just, I, it turns me off the product so much. That's like a personal preference thing. So if you don't mind that smell, then you probably will like love the product. But yeah, for me, I just feel like it's one of those products that I'm like, it's, it's a really nice formula. The packaging, is like fine, but I'm kind of not seeing where the price point is coming from personally. Okay, just for funsies, let's uh let's take this off and try and reapply this foundation in a way that looks better. Okay, so on this side of my face, I'm gonna try and apply it with my little fingers. Mmm, like it has a really nice feel to it, but I don't know, man. Actually, still applying that with my fingers, I still feel like it has quite a bit more um coverage than I was expecting. Okay, and then on this side, I'm gonna apply it with my regular beauty blender. The color's really nice. That's one thing I didn't talk about. Like the tone is beautiful. Let's see this. Let me get up close here. I'll zoom you guys in and I'll also look closer. Can you guys see the little hairs down here and how that product is kind of like standing on top of it? I'm just really surprised that it's still doing that even when like I'm using my fingers for it because at first I was like, okay, maybe it's because of like that silicone sponge and it doesn't like press it into the skin as much. I don't know. I still feel like it's really hard to have control over like where that pigmentation is going to like i think that like even when i try to like press that out it just feels like it's moving the product all over my face i'm not able to just kind of like stipple it out if you know what i mean i like ugh, this is such a weird foundation i feel like i like the overall appearance of it better with the regular beauty blender i think that it kind of like made it have like a smoother finish it doesn't look like it's sticking to like my little kind of like hairs on my face as much but i feel like applying it with that um 
almost took away that kind of like thin texture I was talking about. Like to me, this looks a lot more like a thicker foundation on my face. I just, oh, that's just a weird foundation. I feel like it's too finicky for being $55. I probably like it the best applied with a beauty blender, but I feel like the appearance that it gives off is something where I'm like, this looks similar to other foundations that I love, but it's so much more finicky and like not as foolproof as them. So why would I choose this over top of like other foundations that I love that I can like literally just whip on and not even think about, you know? I don't know, man. That's that's my like final thoughts on that one. All right, you guys. So those are my thoughts. Hopefully I talked about some brands you haven't heard before just for funsies. Um, but that was, that was, Fun. I'd like to do this again. Um, if you have any brands that I didn't mention that you guys feel like are not very talked about or they're new or like, I don't know, maybe Canadian or something, who knows? I would love to know what uh, you guys would like me to try out on your behalf. So leave any brands in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace out. So the packaging I believe is supposed to be fully recyclable. So that's kind of cool. And it came with this little unicorn card. Oh, it has something on the back, an inscription. Listen to your dreams. They are orphic and penetrating and more meaningful than you could imagine.